This summer, meet the magical mermaid at VGP Marine Kingdom from April 12th to May 31st. Hello and a warm welcome to Federal special program Capital Beat. As the counting day is nearing, everyone is talking about the fact that whether at all election commission has been free, it has been fair. Now, yesterday, Justice uh, K.M. Joseph was speaking at a function where he said that election commission of India must come down heavily on the use of religion, race, language and caste to get votes. Whoever it is, however high he may be, they should do it in time. If not, they are doing the greatest disservice to the constitution. That was Justice K.M. Joseph. Now, the point is that looking at the way the election commissioners have been appointed and also the conduct of the election commission throughout this one and a half months. Now, the big question is that what is going to be the future of election commission of India? How will they conduct themselves? Can they really ensure that we, the, the entire nation will see a free and fair election? How will the people realize that, you know, this election commission is an unbiased uh, election commission. So we'll discuss all of this. Joining me now is veteran Supreme Court lawyer and constitutional expert Sanjay Hegde. So thank you so much for joining. What, thank you for uh, having me. Yeah. Uh, always welcome, sir. And what Justice uh, K.M. Joseph mentioned, and that is really something which has been discussed all this while throughout this period when the election campaign was on. And now that the counting day is nearing, everybody is asking that what is going to be the future of the Election Commission of India? How would you really put it as? Well, look, what is the job of an election commission? The job of the election commission is like that of an umpire in the game of cricket. You know, at one point of time, the umpires uh, in cricket came from, uh, from uh, the host country. So when India used to play New Zealand, for instance, there were, there were times when Indian bowlers would never uh, get any appeal. And so uh, I think it was Chandrasekhar who bowled out a batsman and the umpire said he's bold. So Chandrasekhar turned to him and said, I know he's bold, but is he out? So we have come to a stage where umpires from within the system no longer enjoy the same confidence that they once did. Please, the, the fact is that election commissioners were always appointed by the government of the day right from the first election. The first election commissioner was Mr. Sukumar Sen. Uh, he was the one who designed uh, elect, uh, that uh, for, a, for a largely illiterate uh, uh, vote uh, electorate. He said that, look, people can't read. So we should have uh, symbols for candidates. He conducted elections so well. And he, he was an ICS man. He, he was a bureaucrat. That somehow or the other, thereafter, the, the uh, conduct of elections was left to people who had formerly been bureaucrats and of unimpeachable integrity and impartiality. Uh, the constitution has given vast powers to the election commission. For a very long time, there was only one election commissioner. Then towards the end of uh, the Rajiv Gandhi era, that's when two more were appointed to cut down the election commissioner, the then election commissioner, one Mr. Peri Shastri. Uh, that got challenged by Mr. Peri Shastri. And when the, when the Rajiv Gandhi government was uh, succeeded by the VP Singh government, the VP Singh government then simply cancelled those two appointments. So those, those people, when they went to court, they lost. Uh, that's a case called SS Danoa. And then you again had the same system continuing for some time till you had Mr. Sh uh, T. N. Session being appointed. The Narasimha Rao government did not exactly approve of all that Mr. Sheshan was doing. So to cut him down to size, to overrule him, they put in two more election commissioners. And when Mr. Sheshan challenged it, he got an initial stay and afterwards it was upheld by the Supreme Court. So ever since then, the election commission has been a three-man commission. But th uh, the three people have often been still drawn from the bureaucracy. 
the because the a constitution left it to parliament to decide uh, what kind of, a, of uh, appointment procedure it wanted to uh, appoint election commissioners and parliament had not passed any law there was obviously a gap if there is legislation or if they if there is a constitutional provision sometimes you don't need a specific parliamentary en enactment but if there is a gap then the judiciary also ca uh, can step in and the judiciary suggested that look you must have a three member selection commission for such an important institution and it should have the uh, prime minister the leader of the opposition and as a balancing factor possibly the chief justice of india so because the judiciary legislate uh, uh, passed directions in that existing gap the government of the day that's the current government moved in to fill that gap they said no we will have the prime minister the leader of the opposition and one cabinet uh, minister to be appointed by the, uh, to be nominated by the prime minister so effectively by a 2 is to 1 ratio the power of appointment of an election commissioner still rests in the government of the day i do not think that this system can indefinitely continue the okay. new enactment by parliament has been challenged by the supreme court uh, in the supreme court but the supreme court has not stayed the act simply because normally all legislation is presumed to be constitutional until proven to be otherwise after a full hearing so i would think that uh, it would be good for the nation if the supreme court were to decide this constitutional challenge to the act as early as possible but even if the supreme court were not to do it or if things were to be delayed in the supreme court nothing prevents a parliament from again amending the act and for the people of india to request their new parliament that look what has happened over the last few years specifically with regard to this election make makes it imperative that we have an impartial system for nominating people to the election commission and that uh, the appointment system is seen to be entirely above board and not and not give uh, any sense that people who are uh, appointed as election commissioners owe their appointments to the government of the day but uh, mr hegde one clarification like what you said that uh, this uh, system of appointment cannot continue indefinitely and uh, only if supreme court uh, hears on the constitutional challenge or the second option you said that if the parliament the government of the day changes then probably you know uh, that the act can be reversed or some kind of changes can be brought in by the parliament so where does this leave the election commission right now uh, the present chief election commissioner nothing offensive against him but the way the election commission has conducted itself in the last one and a half months uh, there are serious questions on the fairness and neutrality of this election commission so how long can they really continue or we'll still have to wait till the time the government changes and if the government doesn't change then what happens see i even this gov even if the same government were to be reelected if there was enough public pressure and if the credibility of the election commission was seen to be dented there are two ways of handling it either to get into another uh, when the next appointment comes to appoint people uh, with consensus there is nothing even under the present act which rules out consensus if you say if the if those operating the act were to say that uh, if even one of us has an objection to any name the appointment will not go through no oh, but uh, Mr. Hey, they, so, they, sorry, they, to, sorry yes. to interrupt you you said that uh, nobody stops uh, the government from you know appointing people with a consensus now consensus is a very illusory term uh, when you talk about consensus in the present dispensation consensus means like what happened adhir ranjan choudhury was given a list at the 11th hour just 3 4 uh, hours before now is that the, the definition of consensus people would ask that as well yeah. 
obviously not and uh, mr choudhury uh, i don't think has exactly uh, consented to any of the appointments either yes so uh, so it was a two is to one decision if i if memory serves me right yes but the point still is that if you uh, even in the face of the act if you bring in a convention that it will be done only by consensus then also a lot of this uh, angst that these appointments are owed to the government and therefore those who are appointed feel obliged to the government and try to favor the government that impression will go uh, there is a theory uh, that uh, the robes of office change the man within mm. that when you get into that high office when you say i am election commissioner i can i cannot uh, look to who appointed me and there are there have been people who have practiced that theory also you remember that uh, mr somna chatterji when he speaker of the lok sabha and then there was a no confidence motion where his party the communist party said that they would vote against the government he refused to abide by the party whip saying that the speaker is above party politics yes so yes there are people who say that when we are appointed or elected or selected to high office we will go by what the constitution says and we will uh, maintain an absolutely straight demeanor to check everybody equal without fear or favor but right. there have been people who have not held the scales correctly so what is to be done about such uh, appointments therefore if there is a consensus they and then the choice turns out wrong the government can always say look everybody consented right now that is not what is happening but uh, the conditions apply to what you said uh, of course that there has to be a public pressure to provoke the government to bring in consensus to provoke the government to bring in those changes so until and unless that public pressure is brought in uh, it won't work that way of course it will not work see why one of the reasons i gave you that cricketing uh, analogy yes one of the reasons that then the host team uh, that neutral umpires were appointed was simply because then people started tuning out of matches where they thought that the uh, home team was having an uh, extra advantage of two more players so they so public pressure is what works disenchantment with the system if it grows then the system has to fight back and it is not as if neutral empire solved the entire problem despite the a neutral empire uh, like there were there were empires like uh, steve buckner of the west indies whom the indian team later objected to no system is perfect but you can always work towards bettering of a system and if you go if uh, you have passed a legislation which says only the uh, prime minister and a cabinet minister can outvote to is to one the leader of the opposition then you must try and give everybody a fair shake so therefore go by consensus but uh, mr ekdi looking at the conduct of the election commission uh, especially in 2024 and the way they've held the elections the way they've conducted the elections how would you really define the conduct of the election commission have they been free have they been fair have they been arbitrary many questions are there how would you look at it well it could be argued that they have been uniformly blind and uniformly mild so they uh, so each time that uh, uh, something really outrageous happens and one side or the other uh, yells they have they have pretended to look away but when they take action they they try they have tried to club both uh, complaints together and yes. given some uh, minor kind of directions uh, they have been pretending to do their job that's the uh, that's the best way i can put it they have been, uh, they they have been showing action for the sake of action 
without it necessarily being effective. But uh, how would one fix the uh, accountability of an election commission like this? Uh, uh, I mean, there, there, there are lots of answers which they also need to give. And if you're saying that they are uniformly blind, uniformly mild, I was just taking down my notes while you were speaking. You said that they are pretending to do their job. You said that they are showing action for the sake of showing action. If this is the conduct of the election commission, then how does one fix the accountability of an election commission? Can the courts do that? Or can the citizens do it? Who's going to do that? See, we have kept very stern uh, protections for election commission. You know, they, they can only be uh, election commissioners. They, they can only be impeached. And therefore, we, what could possibly be done could be some kind of parliamentary committee after the elections, which would review the working and possibly some of their decisions and say and clarify to the election commission that look, the representation of People's Act says that you will not make appeals to the grounds of religion. On this day, this event happened. On this right. day, you, you, uh, there was a complaint lodged with you. You took no action. Parliament disapproves of this conduct or something of that kind. That, that, way, that, that would send a, a message. The other question which has been uh, you know, troubling my mind is that why should election commissioners now be appointed only from the ranks of bureaucrats? It may be that to broad base the election commission, possibly you could have people from other spheres, maybe senior journalists, or may or maybe senior judges. So it it would possibly be better for the for whichever administration uh, takes upon itself to provide a more fair election commission to look into the possibilities of uh, appoint, making appointments from people other than former bureaucrats. But this is like your suggestion that, you know, people from other uh, spheres could be included uh, and would be considered for the post of the election commissioners. But uh, how, how, how open would be any government of the day to an idea like this, having judges, having journalists? Well, irrespective of the parties, I mean, humko malum hai jannat ki hakikat, lekin dil ko behlane ke liye ye khayal acha hai. Is is what Galib would have said, but uh, uh, there come there are times when uh, people speak strongly through their mandates and through their movements. So then it becomes a question of restoring credibility. Equally, the very suggestion that uh, there be non-bureaucrats who, uh, who become election commissioners would itself send a message to the, to the pool which, which could be considered for future appointments. Well, that's that's a welcome suggestion, but uh, I don't know how far the government will be open to the idea of considering these uh, uh, suggestions, but uh, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you so much for joining on The Federal. And one appeal to the viewers who are watching this interview, subscribe to our channel, send us your feedback, and stay tuned to The Federal. Thank you, Mr. Egde. Thank you so much. This summer, meet the magical mermaid at VGP Marine Kingdom from April 12th to May 31st.